Hey, you're watching I Love My Job. I thank you very, very much for that. Boy, we've got a special guest with us tonight from Revision. Dr. Mark Nolan is with us. It's really a pleasure to, not only to have Mark, but to have Revision. And we're going to talk about, again, a lot of important parts in that body, but certainly one of them, Mark, is your eyes. Absolutely. Thank you no, for having me. No question about that. This okay, let, we, we off camera we were talking about me, but thank goodness we're going to switch that subject because now we're going to talk about Mark. That's what we're going to talk about. Where is Revision? You're Re going to work there every day. I work uh, between two offices. Our um, One office is in 240 West Cook Road here in Mansfield. And I'm there two or three days a week. And then the other two, three days a week, I'm at our Polaris location in Columbus. Oh, so anyway, you commute back and forth. I do, okay. I do. And Great. I love my job. Great, congratulations. This is awesome. Now, Mark, professionally, you're an optometrist. I'm an optometrist, What correct. does that mean? An optometrist is an eye doctor that uh, is basically diagnoses disease, but also can treat for uh, myopia, nearsightedness, astigmatism with glasses, contact lenses. But in the state of Ohio, we can also treat for other eye diseases like glaucoma. And that can require using eye drops or prescription medications to um, help treat that disease. So um, the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist is an ophthalmologist is further trained in surgery. So if I have a patient that has cataracts or macular degeneration, detached retina, that requires surgery, then we send them to the appropriate ophthalmologist uh, at, at my practice, I'm very fortunate to have two wonderful ophthalmologists that treat for the anterior, the front of the eye, uh, for cataracts or LASIK refractive surgery. Okay, mm -hmm. and those two people that you're That fortunate. would be Dr. Schumer and Dr. Shaw. Yeah, mm -hmm. great people. Yes. Doing a great job, very, yeah. very they, professional. They make my life easy because great. they do such a good job. And Revision, you're, you're in a very professional office. Correct. Atmosphere and environment. Correct. Okay, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Because again, uh, I don't need to tell you how important, again, our vision and eyes and that sort of thing is, and you've experienced a lot of that. Hey, Mark, let me take it back. Uh, uh, originally, you're from? The Cleveland area. Okay, and where'd you go to school? Talk to us about that. I went to Valley Forge High School and then uh, Cuyahoga Community College for two years, and then I graduated from Baldwin Wallace University, uh, at the time it was college, but, uh, and then I went four years to The Ohio State University College of Optometry uh, in the early 90s. Okay, now when you finished schooling, of course you never finished schooling, I realize that, uh, you went to work revision or did you work elsewhere? So uh, I had a variety of jobs right out of school. I was able to work in private practice, commercial practice, commercial being like lens crafters, uh, LASIK plus, so that would be like a, a refractive surgery center. Uh, and then I, I finally chose to go into medical. So for the last 20 years, I've been with an ophthalmology group. More recently, the last seven, eight months with revision. Uh, I was limited at my last ophthalmology uh, location uh, and wanted to expand what I can offer, specifically more medically uh, necessary uh, arrangements such as pre and post operative care for cataract surgery, LASIK surgery, uh, helping to treat glaucoma, dry eye disease, and macular degeneration. So some opto optometrists focus mostly on helping patients see better with glasses and contacts, and I wanted to take that a step further, which is great, doing glasses or contacts, and I can still do that, but I, I, I enjoy ophthalmology the ophthalmology side because it also helps patients see better beyond glasses or contacts uh, with cataract surgery and refractive surgery. So your experience and skills have taken you into a much more comprehensive arena than where you were before. Absolutely. I love my job. Oh, good. And now you experience more of that on a daily basis? I do, yes. And it's challenging too. You ha you'll have difficult patients that um, are losing vision and you need to try to help them any way you can. Um, so at Revision, uh, we have a wide variety of tools available to help patients uh, maintain their vision. Okay, now certainly throughout the years, you've experienced, uh, I, I would think, a lot of changes in your profession. Correct, so when I started school in 1991 at The Ohio State University, optometrists were not allowed to prescribe drops or drugs 
to help diagnose and treat eye disease. Mm -hmm. That happened, I think, around 94, and then um, further DEA privileges about 10 years ago, too. So uh, we do have patients that sometimes after surgery have severe pain, and we need to prescribe appropriate medication to, to help them. Sure. Let me take a quick break, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank Dr. You. Mark Renolan is with us from Revision, a very, very interesting young man, very, very professional, and really knows what he's doing, and that's what is important for us, for our, our eyes. We're going to continue this discussion. You know, one of the things I want to get into, and because I see a lot of it on television, is dry eye syndrome, whatever that is, yes. you're going to tell us. Right now, we'll be right back with I Love My Job. Don't go away! Welcome back to I Love My Job. Once again, we are so glad you're with us. And Dr. Mark Nolan is with us. He's with Revision. He's an optometrist. And this guy is really comprehensive. Really, really wide range experience and skills that he has. And again, he's with Revision. So very, very important. You know, uh, uh, Doctor, one of the things that, uh, again, uh, just watching television, of course, and not knowing what really is going on, we, they continually talk about this dry eye syndrome. Help me out, what are we talking about? Dry eye syndrome we see every day in, in the clinic. It's the most common disease that I treat uh, and that most eye doctors see. Fortunately at Revision we have enough options for patients to help them with their dry eye disease. And dry eye disease is a multifactorial uh, process in, involving lack of tear production from the lacrimal gland. Uh, it also involves lack of oil production from our meibomian glands. Uh, the oil is necessary to prevent evaporation. And so some patients have dry eyes simply because their tears, as soon as they're made, they evaporate. It's also inflammatory as well as microbial or staph bacteria that's normally all over our body but also on our eyes and some patients have an increase of staph buildup and that can contribute to inflammation and dry eye disease uh, combined with the lack of tear production and uh, lack of flow from the oil glands. So I help treat that. What causes that? Is that something inherited? Typically you see it as, as patients get older. Uh, as they mature, uh, it's, it's more difficult to maintain homeostasis or a good stable tear film. So typically you don't see younger patients with dry eyes, but definitely there, there are patients that are out there. So it's all ages primarily are more mature client patients. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna ask you probably an obvious question mm -hmm. and, and, and stick with me for a moment. Mm -hmm. How do I know I've got dry eye? Typically the, the symptoms uh, include burning, redness, uh, blurred vision, uh, particularly if it fluctuates. So patients coming in uh, stating that their vision's good in the morning, but they're just driving home at night and it's hard to see things. That's typically dry eye disease. You could have watering and patients say all the time, well, how can my eyes be dry if they're watering? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a reflex tear gland in, in, in next to our lacrimal gland that will kick in when the eye is very dry. For example, if I went outside and a gust of wind hit my eye, it would reflex tear. So tearing, redness, burning, and blurred vision are the top four. Okay, how do I know? I mean, you're gonna tell me, okay? How do I know that we're not talking about dry eye and we're really not talking about uh, uh, cataracts? Cataracts, right, because blurred vision can be caused from a number of things. Uh, but typically, if it's dry eyes, it's fluctuations in vision. So uh, typically, their vision might be good at one part of the day and not the other part. With cataracts, their vision all day long while they're awake is blurry, particularly driving at night. Uh, cataracts are a clouding of the inner lens inside of our eye that causes glare, halos, distortions, and uh, difficulty reading, just everyday tasks. So dry eyes, it's more transient, and cataracts, it's more permanent. Okay, now if I suspect that, even if I don't suspect that, 
you're telling me what I should definitely do is get into revision, request you to tell me the issues that I have, the challenges before me. Correct. We recommend everyone to have at least an eye exam yearly just to be uh, preventative as well. Uh, if you do have eye pressure that's starting to go up or the start of cataracts, it's good to, to, to be ahead of the game uh, to help treat it so uh, you can help patients. So generally that's yearly with revision with myself, Dr. Shaw or Dr. Schumer. Okay, so you're telling me even though I might say, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with me, layman, 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 okay? Correct. And you're saying, hey, you really should come in for an eye exam at least once a year. Correct, and some patients, they don't realize that they have diabetes or high blood pressure, and that shows up inside the eye as well as thyroid conditions, but uh, uh, in, in general, it's good every year. Good point. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay. Now, uh, what what are you going to do for me if we do, if you diagnose me with dry eye? What are you going to do? Well, we have a certain level of, of care. The, the first is starting more basic, and Dr. Schumer, Shaw, and myself have designed an eye comfort box at Revision. Uh, basically, it has four different uh, uses for different materials that can be used for mm -hmm. the for the eye. I, I have one right here. Did you want me to show you? Uh, can I take a break and get back we to it? We could do that then. Hey, don't go away because uh, uh, Dr. Nolan is going to show us something here that's very important for all of us and let, watch this commercial break and then we're going to come back and he's got the box and let's go from there. Okay, tonight we're talking to an optometrist, and that's Dr. Mark Nolan. And he is uh, with Revision, and of course, obviously, very experienced, very skilled gentleman. And okay, we were at the box, and I had to stop you. Let's go from there. You brought the box along. So Dr. Schumer, Shaw, and myself came together. We formulated a plan. What can help your average patient, patient with moderate to mild dry eye disease? And we came up with the box. Uh, just to make it simple for patients. Inside, there is information how to use each four of the components. We feel that all four together synergistically help offset all the problems with dry eyes, lack of uh, eye uh, tear production, uh, inflammation, and uh, evaporation. So would you like me to show yeah, you the box? Would you please, would you please. <clears throat> so our eye comfort box first again starts off with information both on the front and back, how to use the products inside. Uh, in no particular order, we have something called a brooder mask. So a brooder mask addresses the evaporative process where our meibomian glands, our lid glands, do not produce enough oil. They harden and it be, they become more toothpaste-like. So we put this in the microwave for about 30 seconds, keep on uh, the eyes for uh, about five to 10 minutes, and that helps to open up the oil glands to let them flow more like olive oil, as opposed to the oil being more toothpaste-like. So we feel that the brooder mask, uh, an uh, eye heat mask, helps to open up those, those glands, as well as something called Hypochlor, which is a spray, very simple to use, morning and at night, just like the brooder mask. Mm -hmm. You just spray on with the eyes closed, uh, for 30 seconds, you leave that on there, you can kind of work it in, and it addresses any microbial growth or bacteria, extra staph that's on the eye to control inflammation. It helps with the oil breaking up any clogged glands too. Uh, so that's hypochlor. We also feel that the artificial tear, if the tears are not being produced by the lacrimal gland, that Oasis tears is used as needed. If patients do not have symptoms that day, they do not have to use the artificial tear. But if their eyes are dry, they could use them three, four, five times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's something that we recommend uh, for patients with lack of tear production. Also, lastly, the fourth component to our eye comfort box at Revision is flaxseed oil. So that's omega-3, omega-6. Uh, studies have shown that that helps with better tear production. S uh, and, and that's usually used also twice a day. So the spray, the mask, twice a day, artificial tears, 
as needed. And we feel that the majority of patients that just follow these four steps, and this is a two month supply, uh, we'll see them back in about six weeks to see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. If they're happy, yes. they can refill the box. If they're not happy, we have to think outside the box. There are other options besides uh, for people with more moderate to severe eye, dry eye. Very good. Mm -hmm. That is excellent. Yes. Excellent. We've had great results. I'm sure you have. Now, you've experimented. I mean, you, you've worked with this, obviously. Right. Uh, what did you find? I mean, did people come back and revisit the box again, or do they normally say, I'm, I'm in good shape, I can move on? They normally say that they're, they're doing well. Uh, of course, there's always going to be some patients with moderate to severe dry eye, and then you have to consider other options. For example, prescription medications to help control target uh, inflammation that dry eye causes. There's two prescription medications that we found help patients. Of course, it doesn't help everyone, yeah. but it's an option besides something else that I offer called intense pulse light. Uh, again, these are things outside the box that if, if we can't find the majority of the patients, if there's a few patients that um, still have dry eye symptoms, burning, blurred eyes, redness, irritation, uh, then we have to think of other options for them as well. Okay, you, you mentioned related diseases that could be affecting this, uh, diabetes, correct, et cetera. Yes, yes, Sogren's, um, thyroid conditions, diabetes, they can also exacerbate dry eye symptoms mm -hmm. too, as well as just normal aging. You know, I, I'm, I'm thrilled with, uh, apparently the three of you get together at some... Monthly. Oh, monthly, mm -hmm. and, and come up with these creative ideas that are going to make a difference in everyone's eyesight. Correct, it's, it's wonderful helping people see better. That's why I love my job. That's great. You're doing a wonderful job, thank you very much. I love hey, revision. Hey, you're, we're talking revision, we're talking to Dr. Mark Nolan, we're gonna to continue to talk to him. Great, great ideas, really, for you and I. We'll be right back, don't go away, this is exciting. Hey, we're back. Yippee! You're watching I Love My Job. Dr. Mark Newland is with us. He is a optometrist and he's with Revision and giving you and I really a lot of food for thought. Uh, okay, just hypothetically, Mark, uh, the box doesn't work. Correct. Where do I go from there? Then what we consider uh, would be punctal plugs or prescription eye drops that help patients with dry eye symptoms that are more moderate to severe. So punctal plugs inside in the corner of our lower and upper lids is a little drainage canal, which we call the punctum. So if we put a microscopic um, collagen insert there, the tears that are naturally coming down made by the lacrimal gland do not have anywhere to exit. So they're redistributed back to the surface of our eye. Some patients benefit from punctal plugs, which we offer at revision and we generally see them back uh, about two to three months after we have some temporary plugs put in. They're dissolvable so they can test drive them out in the real world and see if they help mm -hmm. before we put permanent plugs in. Usually insurance helps with, th with those. If they don't work, sometimes we go with prescription eye drops. Again, see them back in a month or two, see how they're doing, and uh, possibly consider intense pulse light IPL. Okay, let's talk about generalities for just a moment. Uh, let's talk about the health of the eye. What, I, I mean, obviously various parts of the body that they tell, you know, I should exercise so many hours a day, da, 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 da. what should I be doing for my eyes to make them healthy? Don't smoke, exercise, try not to become diabetic, control your blood pressure. Uh, those are all very helpful things. We tend to see the leading cause of blindness is from diabetic retinopathy. Uh, and in some parts of the world, just aging, cataracts, there's not much you can do about that. But definitely taking care of yourself is very important and preventative eye care. For example, at Revision, we recommend yearly exams. Okay, uh, anything nutrition-wise that I should watch out for? 
The National Eye Institute did two 10-year studies for macular degeneration to slow down the process. I take them myself. Um, it's AREDS 1, AREDS 2. You'll see them at the store. You can ask the pharmacist. But they help to slow down the degenerative process from macular degeneration. As we age, unfortunately, the, th the retina does thin. The back of the eye thins. Vision's not as good. So we recommend don't smoke. Uh, if you're outside in the sunlight, wear sunglasses. UV light can cause damage to the retina and taking multivitamins if the family doctor says that's okay and doesn't interfere with any other prescription medications, which usually don't. Okay, once again, if I go back, your location, you are? You At 240 West Cook Road here in Mansfield. Okay, revision. revision. And obviously, uh, people watching tonight, they say, gee, I want him. Yes. How do we get you? Give us a call. You could go to revisioneyes.com. Our, our phone number is there. Um, Google us. You'll see us on the web. Okay, so once again, if I want to come in for just an eye examination, which you are recommending here. Correct. Uh, again, I can do that. Correct. We accept most insurance. Okay. So again, uh, all I need to do is request you from the appointment person in front. And correct. And eventually somewhere along the line, I'm going to get you. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Awesome. Thanks a lot. It was great ha having me. Thank you so much, Doug. You did a great job. Thank you're you. You're good. Thank no you. question about it. I, I, you're, I love your professionalism and the fact that you love your job. Hey, I'm Doug Baker. You've been watching Dr. Martin Newland with Revision. He is an optometrist, and this guy is just loaded with skills and talent and education you and I really need for our health particularly the health of our eyes. Thank you for being with us. We're coming back next week for another great show like this, full of information and education you need to know. And good night.